Hi there. So today I am going to be in the kitchen again making a chicken pot pie. It is snowing like crazy outside lately and um, I can't get outside to do anything productive at this moment. So I thought I would just stay inside and uh, do some cooking. Tomorrow my husband has his, uh, hopefully his second to last football game. His uh, football team is in the, well, he helps coach the football team at our local school here, and they are in the playoffs. They've made it so far in the playoffs that if they win this next game tomorrow, they will go to the championship, which is at Ford Field, where the Detroit Lions play in Detroit. So it's pretty cool. So I'm going to be busy pretty much all tomorrow, and I'm not going to feel like making anything, but that's kind of why I wanted to make a chicken pot pie because I thought it'd be like really good comfort food for after the game when we get home and we're freezing and it's all, all set for us. To start it all off, I am using a recipe here that I've used for years, the chicken pot pie Paula Deen recipe. And I'm gonna use uh, everything on it except for I don't have celery, so which is usually fine. I usually half the celery anyway because I'm not like a huge celery fan. So we'll just take out the celery. But so far right now, I have uh, the two chicken breasts boiling right here on the stove. We're gonna cook those all the way through. And then while that's cooking, I'm just gonna work on my like pie crust dough. So all that is is um, two cups of flour that I have in here. I already measured it out. And then a half teaspoon of salt that you just stir into the flour. So I already put that in there. We'll just stir that in. And then in this bowl, I've got one tablespoon of white vinegar. And then in this, I've got measured like a fourth of a cup of ice water. And then uh, one cup of cubed butter, cold cubed butter. So we're gonna mix all this up together in this bowl and make our pie crust for the chicken pot pie. Normally I would use my food processor, but it's really loud and Max is sleeping. So I, I don't really wanna wake him up. So anyway, I'm just gonna mix it by hand in this bowl. I'm going to put my two cups of flour and half teaspoon of salt in this bowl. And then I'm going to start adding my cold cubed butter. And then I'm just gonna basically mash the butter into the flour. It's way quicker and faster with the food processor, but <clears throat> This works too. You can even go in and use your fingers. I've got this mixed up pretty good. The consistency texture that I want it. Uh, the butter is pretty good and mixed up in there. It's still crumbly, but you can kind of like, you know, form it into a little bit of a, a ball. Now we're gonna add the vinegar and water. So I'm just gonna add the vinegar and then a little bit of the water. Now this is a little more than a fourth of a cup just because I had a couple ice cubes in here. So I'm pretty much, I usually start with a fourth of a cup. It does make the water level go up once I get the ice cubes in there. I'm just gonna start with a little bit and then add ice water as needed. So you don't wanna add too much. Just keep mixing until we get the pie dough texture that we want. A little bit more. might be good. I'm gonna feel it with my hands just so I can get a better gauge on it. I think we might need a little bit more water. It is a little messy, <laughs> but it's fun. It's just fun to work with your hands, uh, especially in the winter time. Gosh, in the spring, summer, fall, I'm so used to being out in my garden just like digging in the dirt and planting flowers and just doing things with my hands and I, I miss it this time of year. And so 
uh, I don't usually make a lot of this type of thing during the spring summer season because I kind of get my fix using my hands out in the garden but when the snow hits I just can't sit around and do nothing like I just have to do something with my hands all right I think that was enough water so you can see we still have I don't know about a tablespoon of water left in there once we took those ice cubes out it'd be about a tablespoon left so um and I feel like this is a pretty good consistency for the dough. Actually, in the long run, the more I think about it, this is a lot easier because now I don't have to clean the food processor. I just have to clean this bowl. So that was a win. But anyway, we're going to kind of just like put it in a ball and then I'm gonna wrap it in plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator for an hour to harden up before we roll it out. Just wrap it up, transport it to the fridge for an hour. While the crust is chilling up a little bit in the refrigerator for an hour and our chicken is still cooking over here on the stove, we're gonna do some inside of the pie prep. So it calls for one carrot. And like I said before, I don't have any celery. So I'm gonna go ahead and since I'm not, I don't have celery, I'm gonna use two carrots. And I actually prefer carrots anyway. Uh, I mean, I don't mind celery in this pie. It's really yummy, but um, having two carrots is just as yummy. So we're gonna do two carrots. And then it also calls for, calls for uh, one onion. So we'll put one onion in there. And then it also calls for five red potatoes. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, get all this stuff chopped up. I'll probably wait on the onion because it always makes me emotional. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to get it peeled here, the, the uh, edge of it. We'll wait to chop into it because I'm going to start crying every single time. I've tried all the tricks but nothing ever works for me. Right. I've already washed up my potatoes a little bit, but I prefer to leave the skin on. I think it's pretty, and uh, I like a little bit of that texture and the more earthy flavor of the skin. So I'm gonna leave that on. I like to chop them all up about the same size. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm already starting to cry. Just taking that one layer off the onion. Wowie. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Um, I should have waited, but I kind of like every uh, little bit to be about the same size so that it can cook evenly. Just cut them however big you, you prefer to bite into them at. You like biting into a big chunky piece of carrot? Then cut it chunky. All right. Same thing with the potatoes, just cut them however you prefer to cut them. And then I feel like the chicken should be done pretty soon. I literally just threw it in the pan there uh, with a little bit of salted water and we are boiling it for, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. That looks a little questionable. Chuck it. Now this pot pie, like, it is full. I remember the first time I made it, I'm like, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> We're not gonna fit all these ingredients in this little pot pie. But it works and, and it does cook down a little bit. So, you know, once you're, you got all these like hard pieces of vegetable that are holding their structure really really well but once they cook down they kind of shrink a little bit so uh, you know if you do try this don't be alarmed all right here we go goodness i should tell you guys a sad story right now you know have a little cry let's do it as quick as we can <laughs> once upon a time 
There was a little old man. <laughs> I think our chicken is done, so I turned that off. I will uh, start shredding that real soon here. But I took my carrots and onion and two tablespoons of butter, and I'm gonna put it in the saucepan here, and then I'm just gonna kind of saute these a little bit, just get a little flavor on them. Uh, maybe just get them a little kick start to cooking and uh, throw them in the pan. There we go. Just kind of stir this up a bit, and I <clears throat> am using quite a decent sized pan because we're going to add some more things into this. So I'm actually going to make, like I talked about before, a little bit of a roux with some butter and flour, and then we're going to add some chicken broth to this and uh, potatoes and cook those up as well too. But we will just let this cook for about, oh I don't know, three minutes. Continue to let that butter melt and just kind of get a nice, good flavoring on our part of our vegetables here. All right, so I still have my potatoes sitting here. We're going to cook those in a little second, but first we're going to make our roux. So I have four tablespoons of melted butter. Um, it usually calls for softened butter, but I got it too soft and it melted. So today it's melted butter <laughs> and one fourth cup of flour. So we're just going to um, mix that together. And this is what is going to help thicken our uh, mixture inside there. It just kind of looks like that. So we do need one cup of chicken broth. I usually don't buy chicken broth in the boxes or anything. I kind of make my own with this uh, Better Than Bouillon. It is amazing. The chicken one and the beef one, I've tried both. And it's it's so much more flavorful than like the boxes or the cans of uh pre-made chicken broth, but we just boiled our chicken over here. So I've got some amazing chicken broth I'm gonna use, but I am gonna throw a little bit of this in there as well, just to add a little bit of kick of flavor. Not too much, um, maybe about like a half a teaspoon. And it will just like dissolve with the chicken. Stir that up and dissolve the the broth in there, or dissolve that butter and bouillon in there. It's gonna give it a ton of flavor. All right, so I've got my potatoes, my roux. I've got a half cup of almond milk. Uh, it calls for regular milk, but I have a bit of an allergy to um, some different types of dairy. And then we've got our broth here. So we are just going to add it as needed. My recipe says, you know, after you've cooked this for, you know, a good three, four minutes or so, uh, then you're going to add in your broth. So we will just, I'm going to make sure, right now I have it on medium, but I'm going to turn it up a little bit more. Not like on super high, but just in between like high and medium. And then you're just going to add this in. And then I, a lot of times it will leave like some of that, uh, some of that bouillon in there. And so all I do is kind of grab some of it up again and like swish it out because I like to use all of it. And so then after that, it says to put in the potatoes. So we're going to throw in the potatoes. Got that. Once you add in the potatoes, you want to bring this to a boil. So now I'm going to turn it up on a little bit of a higher heat. I'm going to bring it to a boil and then it's going to simmer for 10 minutes. This is pretty intense of a recipe. I mean, there are lots of different steps, but if you try to think of it as like, while this thing is cooking, you can prepare this thing. Or while this thing is chilling, you can chop up this thing. So as long as you can get into like a rhythm and like different steps to take, it's like super easy and it's actually pretty fun and it tastes amazing. It is so worth it. And like I said, I only do this like, you know, very rarely this time of year. 
when I'm inside and have the time to do it. So we're gonna continue to follow that method and while our little mixture of vegetables over there has been brought to a boil and it's simmering for 10 minutes, we're gonna take advantage of this downtime while we wait and we're gonna shred our chicken. chicken is shredded. I just did two chicken breasts. Um, I ended up actually cooking three because there was three in the package and it was frozen and I couldn't get them separated so I just ended up cooking all three. So I am going to go ahead and shred this third one and just put it in the fridge and maybe I'll make some chicken salad for chicken salad sandwiches later on. It's been simmering for about 10 minutes. We are going to add this mixture of flour and butter. to get all of it out. <clears throat> I used to watch my grandma cook. Uh, we called her Nani. We didn't call her grandma. She was just Nani. And uh, she was the, the greatest cook I knew. Uh, she actually won like awards and was featured in mag different magazines with like her recipes and stuff. And so I loved watching her cook and she was obsessed with Paula Deen. She would watch the Food Channel once upon a time when Paula Deen was on there. And she was definitely her favorite just because of the just down home uh, cooking that she would do. And so uh, whenever I make a Paula Deen recipe, I always hope that my nani is looking down on me and she's proud of me for, for using a great good old fashioned recipe. <laughs> so. All right, now we're gonna add the milk in. And like I said, this is almond milk. And then also a tablespoon of cornstarch. All right, so then once we did that, we're gonna bring it to another boil. We're gonna add in our chicken and the peas. And adding in the peas is usually my favorite part because it just provides so much more color. Like. It's kind of colorful right now, you know, it's got like the white potato and the red and the orange and different things, but like once you add in that green pea, it's just like, whoa, <laughs> it looks yummy. So we'll let this heat up a little bit and the edges will kind of just bubble up and that will be its boil. Then we'll throw the chicken and the peas in. Okay, it has been, oh, I don't know, maybe like one minute, two minutes. Uh, and it's looking really good. We are going to uh, put in our chicken, shred it all up, and now it's starting to look like a lot of filling. And this is when, like I said, the first time I made it, I was kind of freaking out a little bit, like, holy cow, like no one told me I needed like an extra large pie pan for this. This is a little nuts. <laughs> But uh, it all comes together. And right now we're just kind of like incorporating the chicken and the peas with the rest of the mixture. You're not really like cooking anything or, or anything like that. Just kind of mixing it all together. And then at this point, I usually just throw a little salt and pepper on there as well. And cut it off of the heat. And I don't really measure, I just do about how much I think it needs and then you can all, always go back and add, you know, more on your individual piece of pie. Alright, you gotta get a good close up look at this yummy mixture. I love all the colors in there, the red, orange, green gonna be so good. All right, let's get our pie crust out and work well, on we that. We didn't waste that whole hour that this was chilling in the fridge. We did everything else that the recipe called for. So all of that probably took about an hour. So I am actually gonna separate this into two different parts. We're gonna use one for the bottom of the pie and then one for the top of the pie. And then you do want one of the sides to be just a little bit bigger for the bottom crust. Uh, because it has to go you know on the bottom and then also up all of the sides of the pan So you just want a little bit more in one of your chunks Hi 
buddy. Yeah, did you take a good snoozer? So yeah, I just keep rolling this out and flipping it. I like to flip it and then move the flower. We have our pie crust, we just need to fill it up with our filling. looking pretty good and I haven't made one of these since last winter so I'm pretty excited about this um, I have the oven preheated to 400 and I'm gonna put this in there for 45 minutes we will get this in the oven on the top shelf in the middle I already have a pan in there on the underneath shelf just in case it does drip over so we'll set the timer here for 45 minutes and we'll be good to go well it turned out really pretty and it looks so yummy you can see uh, the vegetables peeking through in there and actually Nate is about to come home from practice from football practice and he has been practicing out in that <laughs> a blizzard so we might just go ahead and dig into this when he gets back all right well thank you guys very much for watching and I hope that this kind of encouraged you uh, because I know the first time I made a pot pie, I was a little bit overwhelmed, especially when I read that uh, recipe and Paula Deen is like one of my favorites. I, like I said, I grew up watching her with my nanny and um, I was like, oh my gosh, there's lots of different steps that go into this. But if you just take one step at a time and then do other things while you're waiting for other things to get done, it's really not that hard at all. And the end result is amazing. I cannot wait to cut into this and eat it. It is so good. Um, I'll wait, I will cut into it and eat it uh, when Nate gets home from practice. So I just wanna say thanks again for watching and um, I will put like a little clicky link at the description part and then you can uh, click it if you're interested in doing this Nate recipe. Nate is finally home from practice so I can cut into this and we can taste test it. You can see all the different vegetable colors in there and the crust looks super flaky. There's tons of chicken in it. Mm -hmm. It's so good. And I'm so hungry. And it's just the perfect meal. 
on a day like today. <laughs> I wish you could eat this snack. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.